Welcome to the Elite Weekly Webinar, my fellow Elite members. And of course, if you're watching this after the fact with the recording or on YouTube, thank you for joining. Got a solo session lined up with you guys with uh, Chris being away for the day. Uh, I will be taking things off and talking about all things market. It's been a volatile week. Let's see how things go. Okay, so we got the S&P 500 chart here. It looks a little bit different to Chris. Again, I don't have any of the trend lines up here. Um, again, Chris is really the the man for this when he has uh, a lot of the visual guidances for you. But this is my kind of standard chart here. Uh, nothing spectacular, uh, nothing uh, super uh, interesting from it indicator standpoint except one major thing you might notice that's probably different to chris's chart i proactively went on and actually made visible the riz alpha cross evo chart here um on the chart the indicator here on the chart so you could see this red arrow that just went and gave us a short signal okay just on friday itself and of course a couple people in elite and masterclass students, stock trading masterclass students get access to this indicator forever. Um, and they pointed it out as well. Obviously I saw it the moment uh, it went off because I get I get an alert every time it get, goes fires, long or short. And guess what? We got a short signal. If you take a look, the last time we got a signal was on Monday, January 23rd, and it gave us a buy signal. As you can see, it was a solid signal. Um, this one worked out really well. Um, so interesting times, interesting times. I'm not saying that just because we have the Alpha Cross Evo short signal that the market's going to, you know, absolutely just puke. I'm not saying that's a guarantee, but I know my indicator it has my name on it. Um, I know the, the, you know, probabilities around it. I know how it works. And I can tell you um, more often than not, uh, it works pretty good. Uh, a very nice edge given by this indicator, even when we back test it. So I thought I'd, you know, since it just fired off a short signal on Friday, I was going to talk about markets pulling back and my views on it. So I figured it'd be interesting to give you guys a little bit more context for those that do not know what the indicator is, for those that have not experienced it or seen it for themselves or have access to it. So there is that kind of showcase there for you. Um, but for the week, we could see it's been a, a very red week. Uh, there's no denying that. Uh, so, you know, we had pretty much Monday, uh, sorry, Monday here dropped off and we had Monday was off, sorry, closed. So Tuesday we had a big red day. Uh, and every day since you can see the last four days, because it's a short trading week, we had a red candle. Okay. Very, very big sell off on Tuesday. Uh, and since then, we had a little bit of a pickup, still red candles because they closed lower than where they opened. And then Friday was that gap down there. All right. Uh, and that's where the Alpha Cross Evo kicked off. The Alpha Cross Evo is really giving us a, a short signal because it's looked at the previous pricing data as well. All right. So uh, factoring in that momentum beautifully there. So it remains to be seen if we will go lower. But if I have to make a call, apart from the Alpha Cross Evo, I do think we can go lower. I do think we can see the 3,900 level. And I want to make a line here for you guys just to give you an idea and a little bit of context. Um, the 3,900 level is the level that I'd like to see um, once again. We did touch the 3,950 just briefly, and that's conveniently just a little bit above the 200 day moving average as well the red line uh down here and kind of picked up the market picked up in a, in a bit of a, a sort of a dip buying going on in in the later part of the day uh but still a bearish day nonetheless i feel like we can easily get back to that 3950 area and then if we break below that strongly the next level would be 3900 so i mentioned this to to the elite members as well and i said 3900 is that key area to watch out for this coming week. Does that mean we're going to see a straight line down? No, uh, but because it's a full trading week, we have five trading days uh, coming up, full trading days. So, you know, let's see if we can get down there in that area. So that's my key level. You also notice that we have some strong historical support to end off 2022 here. 
that I've, I'm going to actually circle it just so that makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see. You can see that's a strong consolidation over a couple of weeks in the end of 2022 and just as we started off 2023. Okay, so keep an eye on that being the next support level. And I'm going to, again, make another line here just to give you an idea at just about 3,800. Again, I'm not, I don't, we're not going to hit 3,800. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, we're not going to hit 3,800 straight away just next week. But that's something to keep in mind. A strong break below 3,900 doesn't mean we're going to see 3,800 right away. But it's a key area to keep in mind also because it's a historical support. I personally do not see uh, us getting to the 3,600, 3,523 area low of October last year anytime soon, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. Uh, we're very much focused on the data. We're very much keeping an eye on inflation, which has unsurprisingly ticked up a little bit uh, and, and holding a bit more stickier than anticipated. And here we have the market sectors that I brought up. This is for the last one year. Let's quickly take a look at the year to date as well. Uh, year to date, we have the S&P 500 actually positive on the year up by 3% uh, with, um, with tech, uh, XLY, XLK, XLC, the communication sector, um, the tech sector, and the XLY we have here is actually the, uh, what is it? Um, I see here. Yeah, that's the consumer discretionary sector. Okay, XLY. Uh, and that those three uh, communications, tech, XLK, and XLY, consumer discretionary, are having a solid outperformance of the S&P 500. With the XLF, the financials, very much close to that nearly 4% positive for the year, uh, year to date. And then real estate, again, very close there as well. Uh, strong underperformers, energy, right? So we've been talking about energy and how it's been a massive outperformer the last year plus, uh, but the year is starting off quite uh, slow for energy, just above the zero line. Uh, it's a slightly positive, but just flat for the year to date. And then underperformers are utilities, XLV, which is healthcare, and XLP, which is consumer staples. Okay, so those are the un uh, underperformers this year year. Why are these underperforming? Uh, these three, XLU, XLV, and XLP, because these are the sectors that people usually buy uh, when markets are pulling back. Ding, ding, ding. Markets have been going up, uh, you know, strongly uh, this year to date. Again, we did have a pullback this past week, but other than that, uh, the S&P 500 was up nearly 5%, uh, around 5% for the year uh, before this pullback. Okay. Uh, but when we flip back to the one year, you can see that energy is still outperforming. You can get a lot more data, a lot more uh, zoomed out view of the performance. And you can see how communications and consumer discretionary, real estate and tech, uh, along with financials and, of course, the S&P 500 significantly, uh, you know, underperforming things like utilities and healthcare. Uh, and then we have consumer staples tucked in between there. So what does this tell you? This tells you the S&P 500 for the last one year, okay, has actually been only down just about 3%. We had a significant pullback from the highs. So if you go to the highs, you know, you'll see the S&P 500. If we go back to 2022, um, the S&P 500 has pulled back uh, about 16 or so percent, nearly 17% uh, for from 2022 to now, all right? So it's important to understand for context that yes, this is a bear market still. The S&P 500 is down nearly 17% since the market rolled over from all time highs, but it's not something like you would expect like, oh my God, the market's down 30%. The market's down 35% as if we were in uh, 2008 leading into 2009. Okay. That's not the case. This has been a lot more of a slower burn, so to speak, a slower drop. And I personally would prefer it to be a lot more fast uh, and furious, a lot more quicker and get it done with. But hey, um, that's not, uh, you know, that's not really the case uh, for this 
pull back. So moving on, we have next the few different asset classes here. We have the dollar index on the right hand side and then the left hand side. Uh, I have a few treasury bond yields with uh, the light teal color here being um, the 30 year, the dark purple here being the 10 year and then the two year treasury bond being this bluish purple okay with a massive run up you can see bond yields have run up uh over since february all of this month they've been just moving higher and higher okay you could see the two year actually hit pretty much a high for quite significantly you know, quite a bit of time i think since 2007 so if we were to go back all the way to 2007 the last time treasury year yields two-year yields were at this level was around 2007 Okay, so to give you an idea, the market, what is it saying at this point? It's telling us that the market is factoring in a recession, but since the start of February, it's now factoring in a bit of a stronger recession. That's what this tells me. When we see yields go up, uh, risk is coming uh, down. Market risk is coming down. All right, meaning I should say not market risk, but market risk appetite. OK, uh, risk appetite is coming down for the individual investors and traders uh, and even, I would say, uh, funds. But that hasn't translated enough yet to the broader indices just yet. Uh, primarily, one of the reasons is because I think energy has been really holding up the indexes uh, quite strongly. All right. Um, as we saw earlier in the market sectors, uh, right hand side, the DXY, the dollar index, you can see. The dollar, the U.S. dollar, also along with Treasury yields, you notice that, right? See this, right here, start of February, start of February, just pick up, right? So it's not a coincidence that the U.S. dollar, compared to other global large currencies, has also risen. Okay, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, personally, it, this right here isn't ideal, but it's not too bad. We had the U.S. dollar. Very, very, very strong leading into Q4 2022. I think that was unsustainable. Okay, but this right here, uh, not too bad for now. Okay, uh, still a significant increase in the US dollar strength over the last year and a bit, uh, but definitely not where it was Q4 2022. Moving on to the last asset classes here that I have for us left hand side, we have oil, and then the right hand side, we have uh, gold. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to a line chart just to make it easier as well. And going to change the color here. Sorry. Trading view resets on my settings here. Gold. Let's, uh, sorry. Oil. We'll just keep it as orange for now. And then gold. We'll just make it as yellow right here. Okay. So. Oil languishing here, really consolidating pretty much the last three to four months between that 74 to 80 area. Okay, no trade on gold, uh, oil here, nothing really that piques my interest. Um, I was hoping we'd get a break in a clear direction, but nothing yet. So not really paying attention to that much. But gold here, on the other hand, I mentioned that, look, guys, this rally in gold i mentioned this maybe uh last month or two three weeks ago at least um and i said look gold is way overbought very very overbought doesn't make too much sense maybe there's a bunch of funds coming in to to you know hedge uh but really i, I didn't really buy that i was not buying that rally and i said i wouldn't i, I wouldn't recommend you i do that either uh, and rightfully so, we've got a big, big pullback, uh, what, since the last pretty much two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, last three weeks, start of February. And coincidentally, it also lines up with when we saw U.S. dollar go up and bond yields go up, right? So a inverse correlation there, but correlation indeed. So I'm not going and shorting gold, but personally, I'm just leaving these two asset classes the way they are. It's been busy enough and exciting enough uh, in a good and bad way in markets uh so 
my attention has been really very much focused on that. Uh, and I haven't been too, too concerned with what's going on with uh, gold and oil. Now, with that said, I want to flip back to uh, the main chart here. I did make it cleaner and go open it up to questions uh, and give it a bit of an idea, uh, you know, get a bit of an idea as to what's happening. But before I do that, remember, I want to show you here the current economic data coming up for the U.S. this week. So we have on Monday, February 27th, we have durable goods orders. Okay, nothing too significant in my view that I that I keep an eye on for this uh, manufacturing PMI coming in uh, on Wednesday, and this is Friday rounding up with the ISM non manufacturing PMI. So uh, not none of these are crazy, you know, important indicators, but I, uh, events. But I thought I'd share it with you nonetheless. Uh, we we already did have the inflation data. We already had the FOMC Fed minutes. We already had obviously over two weeks ago, the Fed rate decision. So a lot of the economic stuff uh, has passed for now. Uh, earnings season has also, for the most part, passed, but we do have uh, uh, some some large caps, you know, coming into play uh, this week. But for the most part, the core earnings season has uh, completed. Now, with that said, let's kick, in, kick things off for any questions uh, and any specific stocks you'd like me to look at that you may have. So uh, open it up to the floor. Uh, please comment in the chat and I'm taking a look at it here for any questions that you may have. Okay, Jazz comes in here with a solid question. Nat Gas, let's bring up UNG here for that. Natural gas has been slaughtered, absolutely slaughtered. Um, the last few months and it's almost like a straight vertical down line here um, with finally finding some some support around the seven dollar mark right so i'm quite surprised that the natural gas has sold off this much and i think there's a few reasons behind it um one of them being we're getting a little bit more of a milder winter uh although we do have some kind of some heavy snowfall some storms mixed in here and there but overall it's been a milder winter um, we also have had some production issues uh, with different uh, production facilities going offline. And last but not least, we have what's known as a glut in the natural gas market. So what does that mean? That means we went from having not enough natural gas uh, in 2022, started 2022, and a lot of the natural gas market being disrupted because of the, uh, the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Uh, but that essentially subsided, you know, that fear subsided of what's going to happen with the natural gas market. We now have an oversupply, I would say, of uh, natural gas by all concerns. And with a, a milder winter, for the most part, meant that natural gas demand is lower. So it's one of the reasons why natural gas is significantly pulled back. I think it's way oversold, way done. Uh, I didn't go out and just, you know, buy uh, a natural gas ETF like UNG, for example, but it's very, very much uh, more of a dip buy opportunity. I think if it can hold this level, I might consider, you know, going long with something uh, or playing it via different option strategies. But, you know, Jazz is right. This is very much a good, solid setup. Uh, I feel like uh, this area is, is something that's very strong. Um, but remains to be seen. I am not taking a position in it just yet. Tom asked Meta, can we take a look at Meta? Absolutely. Look at the gap fill. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy uh, that we're looking at Meta as about $170 when, you know, I mean, it, it's been a while now, but if you really look at it from high, uh, it was double even even now right even now um you know facebook i still call it facebook i don't know this whole meta nonsense has just been an absolute uh clown show but ultimately uh facebook aka meta literally lost about 70 percent of its value if you go back to uh all-time highs and then converse that to d 
the low in November, 77% of its value stand corrected. So even more right at that point. So yes, it made a nice recovery, solid recovery. Uh, probably, probably what is this? A hundred percent increase from the lows, uh, 90% increase from the lows, even factoring in this pullback here. Uh, so with the technicals aside, what about Meta? Meta is a, a, a cash generating monster. Uh, it's not a company that's at risk of, of insolvency or bankruptcy. You know, they have no debts, which is phenomenal. Yeah, I think Facebook as a whole, the platform is past its prime. Um, I think, you know, they've obviously been facing a lot of pressure from the Instagram side uh, via TikTok, but I think Instagram made a little bit of a resurgence. TikTok's actually decreased in terms of its engagement metrics over the last few months. Uh, and of course, there's some geopolitical uh, and privacy headwinds for TikTok as well, especially here in, in especially in the US uh, and North America. But Meta here is very interesting. I'm not going out and buying it. Uh, this pullback here is not surprising after earnings um, pop, but it doesn't necessarily help that we've also had a market uh, pullback slightly this past week. So I'm looking to see if it can find a floor around 160. At 160, I might consider it potentially as long. But if you're looking at it from a, from a long-term buy standpoint, it's not a bad entry. It's not a bad stock. But I feel like, you know, it's there's other opportunities that I feel more confident in. You know, and Meta has been very disappointing over the last year and a bit. So when I want to buy a stock, I want to make sure everything is in line, not just the fundamentals, which are there. They're not the as great as they were two years ago, but they're still phenomenal. Uh, you know, this whole metaverse nonsense has been an absolute shit show. Um, apologize for my language, but really, uh, there's no other way to say it. Uh, so I think that's coming back. You know, Zuckerberg's really getting that, I think, very clearly that he's really seen how the market's punished the stock over the last year because of all this metaverse stuff. Uh, and it's not the right time he's realized to do it as in, a, in, a, in an economy that's slowing down. And with all the tens of thousands of job cuts that they've done already, uh, it's not too ideal to be taking these moonshots just now. So Facebook remains, I would say, not an A tier buy, but I would say a B, B minus uh, tier buy. Definitely not the best, but not the worst either. So hopefully, Tom, that gives you a, a bit of an idea. I wouldn't personally go and short it if you're looking for a short. There's other stocks uh, out there that I'm sure are better shorts. Um, with that said, we're going through the, ooh, a lot of questions coming in. Okay, so after that, Abhishek asked about Walmart. Walmart did buy, hold stable. Bring out Walmart here, fan, another fantastic company. Uh, Walmart's done really well over the last uh, year and a bit. As you can see, it's actually been running up since uh, middle of 2022, whereas everything else was cratering. Uh, this is a, a good, I would say, consolidation zone between 140 and 146. Uh, picked up again from 140, as you can see on Friday. Uh, not a bad for long term, not a bad stock for long term at all. Uh, but I, I'm just, I'm waiting. I'd like to see if it breaks below for a buy. I'm not obviously going and shorting it, but I would like to see if it breaks below 140 uh, for a potential entry. That's just my opinion around 137, 138 maybe. Uh, but 136 would be prime with the, with the 200 day moving average there. Okay. Uh, what is it going to do uh, going forward? Uh, is it going to hold stable? I mean, uh, who knows, but I don't see it getting you know, crushed uh, or, or going down. It's going to definitely, I think, do better than the broader market uh, as it's a lower beta stock. Okay, we have Microsoft. Some kid asked me, Microsoft will go to 275 in upcoming weeks or goes down sideways. Okay, so Microsoft. Microsoft had a big run up here with the AI uh, news. Um, you know, with uh, chat GPT and all that stuff, but very much disappointing and pulling back alongside the markets. I think this is coming up to be a nice entry point. Um, I'm waiting again. I want the broader market to sell off 
have all these stocks sell off and then for me to come in and pick up the pieces. That's the ideal scenario. Whether it happens exactly like that it remains to be seen. But I'm very much looking to see it go below the 247 for now for a more precise entry. Uh, and I'm not, again, Mondays are very difficult to say how they're going to be. Uh, but if we do get a solid red week this coming week and we see the market go below 3950, maybe to 3900, I think Microsoft will be a good uh, opportunity as well by then because I'm sure it will be dropped to about 245, 243 uh, easily. Okay, uh, looking at some stocks. Will asked me, would I take MRNA uh, long when it finds support? Uh, so from a technical standpoint, yes, if you really want, it's not, it's more of a, a risky swing trade. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take Moderna for a long-term investment, uh, but for a pure swing trade, uh, I would wait to see if it get to 130, 120 would be ideal uh, for a dip support buy. Uh, but for now, I would not go in and get in just yet. This thing is selling off significantly. It's broken below the 200 day moving average, obviously well below the 50 day moving average. Uh, not very confident in buying just yet. Let the the market really find a floor and let this find a floor, hopefully around 120 area. And then you can consider a swing trade for a long, okay? Uh, would I personally be doing that? No. And I'll tell you why. It has nothing to do with the the technicals or the fundamentals. It has to do more so with, I do not want to buy Moderna solely for personal reasons, because after I took, uh, uh, you know, after I got the vaccine, it fucked me up. So just for personal reasons. Okay. Um, what's, let's see, let's see here. I have another question with Matt. Haynes tenure is low. This one, Haynes brand HBI. Well, it's at a 10 year low for a reason. Um, this is very much, uh, pretty much a penny stock. I would not touch it. Uh, there's other stocks to, to worry about. It's a, uh, I don't want to say it's going to go under. I mean, it's been a company for a long term, uh, well known in the garments area, but, uh, not something I would be, uh, interested in buying, uh, or shorting. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? C, demand zone. Okay. Yeah. So some good questions there. I believe I got to them. Chat's a little bit confusing here with, um, my, my system keeps scrolling up, uh, in the chat here, but, uh, yeah, so far solid questions. Hopefully this gives you guys a bit more context around these stocks. Uh, and hopefully you got the answers that you're looking at. Uh, but Haynes brand, no, no, there's, there's way better stuff, um, you know, that I'd rather, uh, pay attention to, you know, you can have my watch list here that you see a couple, you know, you have Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, the key players, right. Keep an eye on those. Um, we have some earnings coming up and I want to just quickly bring a couple ones that I find of interest. One of them being Costco. Okay, Costco releases earnings Thursday after close. Uh, again, Costco has also done really well uh, over the last, uh, you know, year holding this area, um, a long-term sort of consolidation, but very much sort of this sort of seesaw down here, but this is not a bad entry point for long term. I'd like to see it go lower to around 470, but we don't know how earnings is going to go, right? So it's best to wait. No position just yet. Uh, I like to very much consider taking a position if it goes lower than 470, uh, but that's something to keep an eye on. We also have Salesforce, um, CRM, keep an eye on here, and they are releasing Wednesday after close. Okay, uh, so Salesforce, again, very, very beaten down uh, after the 2019 highs that they, uh, 2021 highs that they had. Um, so right now, again, earnings coming up. So we don't know that, but it's, it's important to keep an eye uh, post earnings to see if there's an opportunity. Sometimes, you know, you'll see stocks gap up. Sometimes you'll see them get completely oversold. And then you have to obviously assess how do they do on earnings? How are the fundamentals? How's the sentiment? 
and then see if it all lines up and maybe you can take a position, right? So something to keep an eye on, uh, CRM as well, pulling back a little bit alongside the market. Uh, so those are two that I had outlined here for us. Obviously, there are quite a few companies uh, releasing as well. Um, not all eye-catching uh, or, or, you know, something that I preferred looking at, but uh, these two are the ones. Um, Jazz asks how she... S-E-A. E-A. Oh, sorry. I... E-A, sorry. It looks like an S from far. Whoops. So E-A, uh, we have here, very oversold. Had decent earnings uh, from a number standpoint. Their pipeline of games hasn't been too ideal. Uh, but at a very long-term support, take a look at this. Okay, 2022 May, right? And then we had this just brief, brief touch around 110 uh, in 2020 in November. So look at this crazy long-term support area, uh, multi-year support. Uh, this is very much, uh, I would say, a dip by support by area, good technical area. But with that said, look at the market environment. Right. I'm not surprised EA has been dropping uh, this past week, but I think eventually if the market holds up, uh, this could be a good entry. Let's say let's walk through it. Let's say the market pulls back. This goes down to, you know, not exactly 105, 106, but let's say it goes to like 108. Um, do you enter at that point? Yeah, you can definitely consider an entry. I might consider an entry as well in this this is something that i have some short puts on as well or i did um and i want to see if it gets to you know the 108 area if it holds if it consolidates a bit maybe take a swing trade on it with a potential you know stop define where i want it to go and then set a stop accordingly but i would not be holding this um as a as a buy and hold type of stock or carry okay uh not the worst uh not the worst company out there um but not something I feel confident in just holding uh, for long term. It's not a Google or Walmart or something like that. So if I do take one, it'll be a swing trade on the long side, not the short side. Okay. Hopefully that gives you some context, Jazz. Again, some great questions. Went through quite a few bit of stocks. Hopefully, you know, gives you a little bit of clarification on my train of thought around markets plus around some of these individual stocks. Let's see how things go. Again, interesting times that we got that short uh, short alpha cross uh, indicator here. Uh, so I will be very much keeping an eye on that. And like I said, uh, we have a plan for those of us in Elite with the uh, tiered buy list and market game plan. So we we'll definitely want to look to following that. Uh, but other than that, we'll see if there's any potential swing trades able to be taken in the meantime, either long or downside. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and uh, we'll have this uh, uh, webinar next week as well. All right, guys, take care. Ciao.